everyone, and uh, let's talk about testing web accessibility today. So first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Adrian. I'm from Spain. I'm a team lead and a front-end developer at my company, and I'm a huge accessibility advocate. And you can find me almost everywhere under my surname. So accessibility. I got always the same question about what is this A11Y that we see all across the internet. So A11Y is the international acronym for accessibility. And this is because there is 11 letters between the A and the Y in the word accessibility. So said that, I'm gonna use this a lot in the presentation. So why is so obvious in the real world that those four situations are completely wrong? So in the first two, there is a ramp, very, very steep. There is the stairs at the end of the ramp in the third picture. And in the fourth picture, there's a ramp that is totally unusable. So why is this so, so obvious that this is wrong? Well, for example, at a different situation, someone comes with a wheelchair, there is an accessibility button, perfect. This person pushes it, the, op the door opens automatically, but surprise, there are stairs. So, it's so obvious that this is wrong. But when we move to the online world, this is not so obvious. So uh, web accessibility is essential for developers to not exclude anyone when we developers develop our applications. Um, that means that our tools, our website, every technology that we use uh, is designed and developed as well for people with disabilities so they can use them. So let's see an example. We saw some examples in the real world. Let's see something in the online world. So you go to a web shop in e-commerce and you want, to, you want to see, you want to check your latest purchases. So you call the support and they can help you. The typical answer could be, oh, you need to click in the, in the button in the top right corner. Or maybe you want to change the, your email address or any settings in your profile. So they can tell you, you need to click in the button with the engine icon. But for blind people, there's no such as top right corner. There's no such as an icon that look like an engine. So we need to have this in consideration when we, when we develop our applications. Let me give you some numbers. A um, couple of years ago, we were around 7.6 billion people in the world. And more than 1 billion people live with some form of visual impairment. It could be using glasses, it could be bl uh, color blindness, or it could be 100%, which is totally blind. But when we develop our, our online businesses, we want to reach as much people as possible. So we cannot forget that this is our audience as well. I'm not going to talk about developing web accessibility today. I had a different talk. It's called How Does Your Website Sound Like? And you can find it in YouTube. But I'm going to talk about testing web accessibility. How can we make sure that what we develop is accessible? Automate tests are very cool. And they can free up your QA team, your testing team, for manual testing every part of your application but it's not magic. They cannot automatically make your site accessible. Um, we cannot forget that these automate testing can only um, detect 20 to 50% of the accessibility issues. So we need to treat this automate phase as a part of a one bigger testing process, as a one step, and where manual testing is as important as the automate testing. So, I've created a very simple application in React with three tiny components, which the first one is a button. The second one is a fake button, which is an anchor link with a roll button. Sneak peek, never do that. And the third one is an image. So, and in the uh, entry point of the application, I put a bunch of errors. So let's see if we can find and how can we detect those errors with some automate test tools. So I divided this presentation in three different blocks. Um, the blocks for me is what I use every day. So I can test while I develop, I can test, I can test after the, I develop, and of course, 
we are going to talk about this manual test that I said before that is as important as automate tests. Let's start with testing while you code. So since I'm using a React application to show you some tools, I'm going to use the first one is React Axe. <clears throat> React Axe, uh, the Axe family is a library, is a uh, family of tools that Deque University or Deque Labs um, created, right? Developed. You can install it as a developer dependency in your application. Uh, you can use NPM or Yarn, depending on the package management that you use. You need to export this function, this library, only if you're using an environment which is not production. That means you're exposed these logs. And of course, you use the React DOM and you pass it through the Axe engine. What is this library doing? In your browser, when you execute your application uh, in the console log of your browser, in this case, I'm using Chrome, I'm going to see all the issues that my application is having. Uh, as a, some kind of um, features, let's say. So one is that if you have several times the same issue, it's going to be grouped. Those groups are telling what is the error. So for example, I said elements must have sufficient color contrast because it's not double A or triple A, or images must have an alternate test. Um, they are going to give you as well a severity level from minor, moderate, serious, and then with critical. So this will give you more information about uh, the priority of, the, of, of when you need to tackle these issues. Um, it's going to give you as well the information of where is the error. So it's going to give you the HTML element in your code where the error or the issue is uh, appearing. And I think the main feature of this uh, library is that it's going to give you a direct link to the dequiuniversity.com, which is the official documentation from Deque to help you learning more about the issue and helping you as well to fix the issue. So it's going to give you all information and all details about how to fix this issue. You can use as well linters. So for those who don't know, uh, what a linter is. A linter is basically a config file where you put some rules and you tell, let me know that I'm doing wrong when I'm doing wrong. So let me tell you that I'm, that I'm making a mistake on this rule. Uh, then you can use a plugin for accessibility. Um, so in, you need to configure in your ESLint um, RCJSON file in the config file that I was uh, saying before you need to include it in your plugins in line number two. And in line number 12, we say extends and extending the recommended rules of the accessibility plugin, which with this line, it would be enough, all the rules. I prefer to extend my rules to define some parameters. That's why I have uh, some of the uh, config uh, parameters in the rules section. And of course, <clears throat> as every linter uh, is going to show you in the uh, code editor. In my case, I use visual code. When you have an issue, it's going to show this uh, wavy red underline. When you hover with your mouse, it's going to tell you what is the issue. And as well, it's going to give you the same information in the terminal when you run the application. So it's very useful to uh, avoid shipping code that is not accessible during the development process. The third one that I want to you show you, which probably is my favorite, is Yext Axe. So again, we are back to the Axe family. Uh, and Yext, for those who doesn't know them, is a JavaScript library to create unit tests. In this case, you can use Yext Axe to create accessibility unit tests. So you need to install it as a developer dependency, the same as the other ones. And you can create a simple test. So the one that I have uh, created, uh, import the whole application, so the whole app from the app.tsx file. I expect not to have any violation, obviously. And what I'm doing using the React DOM server is to transform my whole application into a string and then I'm throwing this string into the Axe engine. And of course, 
again, I'm expecting not to have any violation. So when I am going to my terminal and I do NPN run test or yarn run test, and I can see the test running and I can see pretty much the same information that I show in the React X in the console. So I'm gonna see uh, what is the error. I'm gonna see where is the error in my HTML. It's gonna give you a bit of information. And of course, again, this link directly into dequiuniversity.com, which is again, the official documentation. So it's very, very good um, library. So those are the applications or the, or the libraries, the tools that I use while I develop. But sometimes we, you, are, you can arrive into a company, a mature product, and they tell you we've, we've never done any accessibility work in this one. Or maybe you tend to think that you're done with your code. So you want to be able to test the whole DOM structure of your application. So in this part, I'm gonna show you some uh, tools that you can use in the terminal. So you can pass the engines or the testers over a whole HTML or the, over a whole website. The first one, back to the Axe family, uh, they develop a CLI. So you can use this into the terminal. In this case, you need to install it globally in your machine with the dash G. And you can run it easily in the terminal, put in Axe, followed by the URL that you want to test. So in this case, I'm testing the Stack Overflow uh, website. It's gonna start a Chrome headless instance and it's gonna perform all the tests for you. What is it gonna give you new? Well, I mean, the typical thing from Axe again, what is the error, where is the error? It's gonna give you a trace of the error. And again, the link to Dequid University. So you can learn a bit more about this. Very similar tool, PA11Y. Again, the same as before, you need to install it globally in your machine. It, it really uh, works the same as, as the Axe one. So you need to put pay11y followed by the URL that you want to test. And it's gonna the same test, basically. It's gonna run a headless browser. I don't know in this case what they use. And it's gonna give you what is the error. One more thing that they are giving you is the principle on the WCAG that you are violating. Uh, it's gonna give you the whole trace in the HTML uh, DOM. And it's gonna give you the exact element that is violating this principle. This case, of course, is not access. You don't have a direct link to the documentation. It's your duty to Google it and do your homework and find out how to fix those, those issues. And as well, you can run this against your local host. So you don't need to deploy anything to a test environment or even to a production to be able to test this. PA11Y as well has a very interesting feature because sometimes uh, I heard people say like, oh, look, I mean, I have like 25 URLs. I don't want to go one by one to test all these, um, all these URLs and I don't want to put this into my, uh, into my uh, processes, right? So you can, you can create a JSON file, a config file uh, with some parameters. So if you see the JSON file that I created, I have three URLs. So the first one is just a plain URL for Stack Overflow. The second one, I pass a timeout of 50 seconds, which is pretty much actually. And I'm taking a screen capture, what I can use for reporting purposes, or maybe you have a visually regression test and you can use it to compare screenshots. But I think the, the, the biggest feature of the, of the PA11YCI is that you can perform action. So you can click in an element when the element is loaded and this element you can find it through a CSS class or an ID. In my case, I'm navigating it through a different part of the application and I'm taking two screens. In this case, you just need to put PA11Y-CI. It's gonna look into the root of your project to, to find this JSON config. And it's gonna perform the three uh, tests. So in this case, it is found in three URLs. The first one is gonna be very quick. The second one, fairly quick. The third one is taking a screen capture, then it's navigating through the other one, creating another test and making another screen capture. So, and the results in the terminal are gonna be pretty similar. Again, what is the error, where, and 
what is the element that is violating the, the principle. And you can see in the root, uh, the screen captures that it was taken. Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a application or a tool created by Google and is included in every Google Chrome browser. But as well, you can use it from the terminal. Uh, maybe you want to, uh, I don't know, include this into your uh, develop, um, releasing pipeline, for example, right? Or your uh, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. So you can use this as well in the terminal. In this case, again, you need to install it globally in your machine and you can uh, pass this parameter, which is dash dash view. And with this one, what it's gonna do is after the test is gonna um, present you the results in the browser directly. So uh, in this case, instead of a headless browser, it's gonna run a full instance of, of Google Chrome. And it's gonna do a lot of tests. It's gonna do performance tests. It's gonna do no JavaScript tests. It's gonna do no internet tests. It's gonna do accessibility tests, uh, responsive design tests. So it's gonna create a full report. Um, at the end, you're gonna end up with an HTML report. You can click in accessibility. And the same as the other ones, it's gonna give you what was the error, a bit of information on how to fix it what exactly element is the one who's provoking or causing the failure and you have some click uh, so some link and to that leads you to the official google documentation about accessibility in this case so i think i mentioned the main features in my opinion always of every tool that i show you how to test it on at the beginning we said or i said that only 20 to 50% of the issues can be captured via access uh, automate tests. So manual tests is as important as the automate test. So I'm gonna show you some of the extensions that I used in Chrome. In my case, I test in Chrome on how to test manually the accessibility of the websites that we create. So those are some of the ones that we use. I'm gonna show you one by one. Going back to the Que, to the Axe family, they develop a Chrome extension. So you can find it under the development tools in your, uh, in your browser. You just need to click in Analyze. It's gonna perform a full analysis of the website. In this case, again, Stack Overflow. And it's gonna give you those information that they were giving you in the terminal. What is the error? It's gonna be, um, grouped by the uh, issues uh, and in this case it's going to give you those inf this information that you can get in the Daqui University in directly in the in the uh, extension of course you have this learn more uh, link that leads you to the to the to the Daqui University but you can see almost everything now from the browser very similar uh, extension is the ARC toolkit you can find it as well under the development tools it's gonna do quite similar, so you can perform these rest tests. Uh, you can see the families that they are gonna perform. So in this case, I'm clicking in images, and I can see what images, for example, doesn't have an alt alternate test. I can go directly to the uh, to the element, and it's gonna highlight it in the window, so I can easily see what images are the ones that they don't have uh, alt uh, property, right? Accessibility insights. This is this is really a really good extension. Um, one feature that I'm going to show you now is uh, they will give you a map of a tab indexes in your in your website. Why is this so important? Because normally people with this uh, visually impaired don't use a mouse. They normally navigate through using the through your website using the tab key. So the tab order of your website needs to be consistent with the content of your website. You cannot jump from one place to another one. So you need to be, you need to be sure that the order is the correct one. So with this application, you can build this map and you can see uh, if it's consistent or not. So you can keep on tabbing and it's gonna create this map of, of the tab order. So you can see if you jump around or you can, or 
look, this element is out of the order or we need to skip this element because it's not really relevant. So I think it's very beneficial to, to, to finally get a full map and check it before shipping this, this website to production. Wave. Uh, Wave is probably the, the, the most complete extension so far that I, that I found. Uh, it's very quick. It's not found under the developer tools. I think you can find it on the uh, extension bar. So it has their own icon. You can click and immediately you have the, the uh, test already done. You can see directly in the window all the images that doesn't have an alt, the area controls, every role that is not the correct one. You can see the structure of the headings for SEO as well is very useful. You can see the contrast or the issues with the contrast if it's, not, if it's failing the double A or triple A. You can deactivate all the styles. You can see if the DOM structure, the HTML is, is really consistent. And as well, you can inspect the code. So to more into, into the HTML code. So I think it's quite, quite uh, complete, this, this, this tool. But not all the time we want to pass test. We, sometimes we want to put ourselves in the, in the shoes, in the skin of someone who's visually impaired. So I think no coffee is a vision simulator and I think it's a very um, valuable uh, extension so you can simulate how those people, people which is visually impaired, will see your website. So you can simulate different kind of uh, impairments. So for example, you forgot your glasses at home, maybe you, someone will see it like this, or maybe someone has some glare in the, in the eye. Uh, yeah, you can see some snow in the, in the eye, or maybe color blindness, so platanopia. So the colors will completely change so not even colors so you cannot rely always in red is danger or bad and green is good you need to as well give some information you can as well um, simulate some real uh, disabilities right like like central uh, vision or side vision or uh, glaucoma so I think it is a very nice application then to simulate how, how everyone will see your website, right? So those are the tools that I normally use while I develop what I do my, my work. Um, there are more, and I think this is uh, your turn now to dig and, and research about uh, new tools. And if you find some that they are, they are valid and they are really nice, please, send me a tweet with them because I really want to test them. The application that I created for, uh, for the first part of the presentation is under my GitHub. So you can find it there and then you can clone it and, and play around with it. All the slides of this, this, two, this uh, presentation and any other presentation that I did are under speaker.com slash my surname, Bologna. You can find it there. If you don't like to re-watch the, the, the presentation again and you prefer to read it, uh, I wrote a three article series in my blog, so you can read it there and you can um, see the, the code and you can click some links and play around with it. I want to take advantage and recommend you a really cool course and it's not a technical course, it's an introduction to web accessibility to everyone and it's official by the W3C, it's under edX. And I think they extended the, um, the period until September. Uh, so I think it's a very nice introduction on the accessibility world so you can do it and it's for free. So please, I encourage you to do this. And I want to leave with a couple of sentences that I think is very important, a couple of thoughts. Um, Trenton Moss said one day, it's not just about disabled users being able to access your website. It's about everyone being able to access your website. You don't know if you forgot your glasses today, if you don't have your mouse with you, if you have kids and you have your kid in one hand and you, use, you need to use a website with, with, a, with one hand only with the tap key 
or uh, some months ago, I dropped my computer, so my my laptop was completely black, and I needed to do, perform some actions to to buy some tickets. So in this case, when you when you're not a disabled user but you are situational disabled, you realize how inaccessible websites are. So when you develop your application, your websites, please be aware that not only you're not developing only for one set of people, you should be able to develop to the whole audience. So everyone needs to be able to access your website because accessibility is not a feature. Disability is not an option. So we cannot treat accessibility as a feature, as a post process, we will do it later because later never happens. So we need to treat accessibility as part of our development process, the same as we do with UX review, the same as we do with testing, with uh, Selenium tests, end-to-end tests, the same as we do with uh, specification. It needs to be a inside of our daily process because it doesn't take longer to include an ARIA label into a button with a non-meaningful name, it takes you 15 seconds. To um, create a meaningful text in an alt uh, property in an image takes you 10 seconds to describe what you would you see in the image. So if you have an image with a person using a computer, it takes you 10 seconds to say a person using a computer. So it is not a matter of time is not a matter of cost, doesn't cost anything. HTML provides everything you need. Everything is standardized. The W3C is doing an amazing job here. So it's, it's, it's free, it's quick, and it's, it's, it needs to be done. It should be a must. So just keep this in mind when you're developing your applications. Um, thank you. <laughs>